they found no correlation between homosexuality and genetics. In, in order for it to be an arbitrary attribute, it needs to be connected to genetics. And at this time, nobody has established that correlation. Um, so, because we can't apply strict scrutiny to this case, we must, it requires intermediate scrutiny. And so, intermediate scrutiny finds that legal classifications must be substantially related to an important government purpose to be presumed valid. And so, the state has at least four important state interests that they are promoting, um, and they pass the rational basis test. These include the, um, to promote the most favorable relationship for procreation in which both members are biologically connected to their offspring, to promote the link between procreation and child rearing, and, with, um, and the historically proven optimal environment for child rearing, and to promote in, and encourage through financial incentives and legal obligations a sustained commitment between married couples who are biologically related to their offspring, and to promote the historically proven family structure that is formed organizing principle of our functioning society. So these state interests pass the intermediate scrutiny test. Um, in a, yeah. If you look at the old um, definition of marriage in the, his, um, in the history of it, it's, um, it just prescribes non, it goes against non-procreative sex, but it does not in any way target against gay sex. So how can you, um, how can you say that this is consistent um, with today's laws enough to uh, find that gay sex is unconstitutional under that? Gay sex is not unconstitutional under this, um, uh, under no. banning gay marriage. And so the state has an interest in promoting certain things that they choose. They have a right as a state to do that. And so the state has chosen to promote these interests, and that doesn't mean that they need to promote homosexual conduct or homosexual parenting. They have chosen to promote these heterosexual, biologically connected to their offspring. I have a question. You mm -hmm. talked a lot about uh, procreation and how it's related to marriage. If, if marriage is all about procreation, how do you handle infertile couples or couples that don't want to conceive? Marriage is linked to procreation and it's also linked to procreative acts. So those couples are still able to um even in for couples yeah they're still able to no, they are. do the you act concede? of okay you're talking yeah. about but then okay. also um as a state the state is not only promoting procreation they're also promoting what happens after procreation that the offspring should be in this optimal environment that it's been proven that heterosexual couples provide that optimal environment How do you, for the children. Historically though, to me, let's look at Greece for instance, yes, you were getting married to have a child, and that was the primary reason to get married, but how was that an ideal environment to raise a child when they had mistresses, they had people doing other things for them, and the wife was solely there to bear the child, to have the child, and to take care of the child. I don't understand how you can argue that's the most ideal environment for a child. Well, I, first of all, I don't think it's our place to be comparing to foreign courts. This is the United States of America, and we're different than Greece. And uh, we were established at a different time, and we have a constitution that's different. So we can't be compared to foreign nations, because you never know if that situation's going to be the same in this country. So, um... The attorneys representing Schroeder have cited the right to privacy. Um, so in previous cases, including Lawrence versus Texas, Eisenstadt versus Baird, and Griswold versus Connecticut, they cite the right to privacy and called for an increased due process protection when individual privacy and intimacy are threatened by unnecessary government imposition. So the statute in question, Amendment Number 2 of the Idaho State Constitution, does not seek to regulate intimate activity within an intimate relationship, but merely gives formal recognition to a particular marriage. So this is not a violation of the right to privacy because the amendment does not intrude on an intimate activity in an intimate relationship, and it only allows people to choose their particular part, uh, their 
it only promotes a certain kind of marriage. But yeah. under the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, how is it fair to say that you can, same-sex couples still can still engage in sexual behavior and show that, and show their intimacy through sexual behavior, but they don't have the right to get married? Um, well, regarding the Equal Protection Clause, the Equal Protection Clause is not meant to create um, equality among individual, individuals, but is meant to have an equal application of the laws among individuals. So this, um, so this means that there should be no discrimination in the application of the laws. And because, Are you not discriminating against same-sex couples by not allowing them to have marriage and get marriage benefits? Because it's been proven that, like I had mentioned before, that homosexuality is not an arbitrary attribute. So these laws are not discriminating discriminating against a certain class of citizens so we can defer to intermediate scrutiny and the important state interests of the state. Um, and one second. Um, so regarding the um, idea that the right to non procreative sexual contact con automatically leads to um, homosexual marriage is invalid. We recognize that there is a right to non-procreative sexual conduct, including homosexual conduct, but this does not mean that it automatically follows that there should be homosexual marriage. While the state recognizes that non-procreative sex, including sodomy, is, is a right, there is not a particular interest that the state promotes. The state does not promote does promote heterosexual marriages that lead to procreation and healthy child rearing, and it's a rational interest of the state to promote marriage linked to procreation or the potential of procreation. So just because recreational sex is constitutional, it does not mean that the state needs to alter the definition of marriage to account for this recreational sex. Can you further explain um, the adoption topic yes. that we were talking about yesterday? Yes. So. Same-sex couple adoption does not ipso facto necessitate same-sex marriage. As Justice Corey states in his dissenting opinion in Goodrich, the very fact that the child is up for adoption shows that one or both of the child's biological parents were unfit or unable to care for the child, and this means that we have lost the optimal environment that the state promotes. So when the child, in addition, when the child is adopted, there's an individualized consideration of the best household setting for that child. And this focused determination that a same-sex couple can provide the best environment for the child under the circumstances does not automatically mean that the court should allow same-sex marriage because it will not employ the same individualized determination of the best environment for the child.